Hi, this is Dr. Gonzalez with another Clinical Minute. Today we're going to talk a little bit about getting started with the amniotic membranes. You probably have read or you probably have heard uh, about the use of amniotic membranes in managing binocular surface disorders, uh, mainly reestablishing the integrity, the, the, the structural and biointegrity of corneas and conjunctivas. In my office, uh, amniotic membranes are a mainstay in the management of ocular surface disease, especially in the, uh, in the cases where I want to reestablish an ocular surface that's going to be responsive to uh, adequate therapeutic treatment. Many times clinicians say, you know, how do I get started with amniotic membranes? Well, it's actually really simple. You're going to see a video afterwards on, on me placing an amniotic membranes, but basically all you need is four things. Number one, you need a anesthetic. A, you can use proparacaine, you can use tetracaine. Number two, you're going to need surgical spears, and uh, these are extremely absorbent. And uh, you can buy these from any surgical supply store. They come in a, in a little package, sterile, and, and um, they come uh, five to a package. Uh, number three, gloves. You want to protect your patients as much as you want to protect yourself. And number three, uh, amniotic membranes. I typically like the ophthalmologic ones because they're thicker. Uh, thickness in amniotic membranes translates into, um, into more growth factors and more structural components. I've also used the BioD uh, amniotic membranes which are temp a little bit thinner. Uh, so the procedure is actually really simple. You put anesthesia in the eye, you put a lid retractor, and uh, basically you use the, the, the angle goes outward. You typically clamp the, the outer lid first, patient looks up, clamp the outer lid, patient looks down, clamp the upper lid, and the, re the retractor keeps the eye open and uh, put the anesthesia, another drop of anesthesia, and then what you typically do is take the membrane out of the package, be very careful because these are anywhere between 40 to 120 microns thin, so they're extremely thin. And uh, typically, uh, what I do is I use scissors to access the membrane as opposed to opening up. Once you open, they can fly away very easily, and you lose the membrane, and um, it doesn't become too hygienic to put back in the eye. So basically what you do is you dry the surface of the eye with a the, with the surgical sponge, you dry it uh, as much as possible, you place the membrane in the eye, you take a second surgical sponge that dry and you press the membrane against the cornea. And then what you can do is you can place a contact lens on top of the membrane. I typically use an AcuView 8.4 and uh, the patient stays with that membrane for five days. Afterwards, they come back in, and uh, I remove the, the contact lens on the sixth day, and uh, I pay, typically give the patient non-preserved um, lubricating eye drops to keep the lens hydrated. You don't want to be using BAK on a surface that's reestablishing, and you don't want to definitely use BAK because it will, it will actually uh, uh, be per, uh, um, damaging to the, to the growth factors as cells differentiate. So uh, so that's it. It's actually very simple, very easy. You'll see me doing a membrane in the next video. Until then. So this is a video of me doing the procedure. And what you see is I'm actually what I'm doing here is I'm putting the, uh, the lid retractors. Um, I put anesthesia in the patient. Okay. And I typically okay, explain uh, to the patient what exactly I'm going to be doing. Look at me. So mm -hmm. I take the uh, surgical spear and I dry the there surface of the eye. And I make sure that I dry it very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I typically here, so place like three eye drops eye of anesthesia before placing the, the lid retractor so that patient's a little bit more comfortable and the anesthesia is a little deeper. I avoid using the, um, the tetravisc um, type of anesthesia as it tends to be very uh, um, uh, thick. Uh, I remove the, uh, the membrane from the packaging. Be mindful that these packaging, these membranes are very light and can fly away very easily so be very mindful when you're when you're managing them and also understand that the membrane has a nitrocellulose backing which is a shiny backing 
and this backing goes to goes towards you. The dull side goes towards the patient. That's the part that has the uh, the amnion, which right is separated from the chorion. Side, the the reason they put that ahead, backing mm -hmm. there is to provide a uh, better surface for handling the product. So you see, I'm placing the membrane, and I use the forceps the to press the membrane on the surface of the eye. And that's what I'm doing right there, and you'll see that I then come back with another surgical, a, sec a second surgical, surgical spear, and I press the uh, the membrane. A if I'm happy Extract with the way the membrane is, I actually put a contact lens as I did in this in this side. I put a contact lens to keep the membrane fixed, and then I remove the. the uh, I ask the patient to come back five days later, and then I remove the um, the contact lens from the eye. At the end, I always place a little drop of anesthesia. I use try to use uh, a um, nothing viscous. So uh, actually, in this case, I don't use Bessie ones, and then just remove the forceps. And easy, done. Don't squeeze the eye.